Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III, and today I'd like to look at, I'd like to do another Archie Reflex, and today I'd like to look at my personal anger, my personal anger with dating and marketing. And uh, this relates to one of my marriages where I was married to a woman, and I really, really felt angry that when she was in the marketing stage, things were so fucking wonderful. They were absolutely amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And I just feel angry now that I bought it hook, line and sinker and the service turned so shit. And it just, it just looking back, reflecting on it there, I just feel so fucking angry. And, uh... I think the biggest problem is, you know, I've tried to put this this crudely to the woman and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, what basically happened, I went from being priority number one to priority number five or six. And kids came in. I just kind of felt, you know, when my marriage collapsed, I was the end of her priorities. There was the kids, there was the... Uh, the dishes need to be packed away. The washing needed to be folding up. I was about priority number five or six. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a good Eastern European blood I come from. And uh, I, I want to fuck every day. And if you're not into it, well, I'll, I'll outsource those services to other providers. And that's that's really what went wrong. That was what went wrong. I was just... You know, I was prov I was looking at getting a better lease deal on certain services. And I got to fucking tell you, it really fucking sucks. These women have no idea on how to provide service. Well, they do. In the marketing phase, as all promises are made and everything's fantastic. They cook for you. They uh they they put they iron your shirts. They they give you a blow job. They suck you off in the shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't last long once you put a ring on that finger, did it? Doesn't last long. And it, it's just a, such a nasty fucking world. Why do they lie like that? And uh, I, I was always very vocal in my relationships. If the service wasn't good, I will stand up and fucking... I will fucking tell the story and it reminds me of a joke let me tell you a joke fuckers there's a guy he uh, he dies he's gone to heaven before he's get accepted into heaven they say well actually we've also got to show you because of new eu rules we've got to show you the other side we've got to show you hell he goes no 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 i don't want to go to hell i want to go to heaven they go well you can come to okay let's come to to heaven you can have a look around and then you, we've got to show you how and then you need to make a choice so okay he goes the first day he goes to uh heaven he has a good time they have nice meals yeah it's all cool the next day he goes to hell and uh it's nothing like he imagined it's uh they're on his favorite golf course they're playing a round of golf with all these people who are his friends and they're laughing at his jokes and um, he's played a very good round. He goes back to the uh, the clubhouse after the nine holes and uh, he, um, he has lobster and steak and uh, again, everything is so wonderful. And uh, one of the, the, the caddies is even specially cute and has kind of taken a, a shine to him. And uh, anyhow, the next day he goes back to, to heaven and they say, have you made your decision? He says, yes, I, I really loved heaven. But I got to tell you, hell wasn't that bad. The devil's kind of cute. The devil's kind of cool. And he's got a really cute assistant who, you know, I, I was getting on with and uh, it was it was it was nothing like I'd imagined it, so I'd actually like to go to hell. Okay, vump He's in hell. And there's people the same people are picking over bones in a rubbish tip. And he goes, What the fuck happened? He and the 
the uh, the people say to him, "Yesterday we were recruiting. Today your staff." And that's exactly how I feel about my marriages. The marketing phase. And then they wonder why I'm so angry and got a fucking fiery temper. I say, you were so good to me. You used to cook things I liked. You used to own my shirts. You used to have time for me. You laughed at my jokes. We used to chat until 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning until the sun came up. I had so much excitement to tell you. That was marketing, fuckers. Once your usefulness to a woman has ended, they they don't market, okay? There's no need to keep marketing with you. There is no need to keep the marketing on. This is marriage. This is why the MIGTOE movement is exploding. The MIGTOE movement. Why is it exploding? It's exploding because these nasty bitches won't do any remedial marketing once they're married. They're greedy, nasty, greedy, nasty bitches. That's the only words to use. I'm Archibald Chesterfield III. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. And share your marketing stories, fuckers. I'd love to hear your misery. We specialize here in pre-owned Rolex watches. Rolex watch is a very special timepiece, and we always do the servicing exactly as factory specifications. We buy a pre-owned piece, and we put it into brand new condition. We have Rolex certified technicians working on that. We completely disassemble the piece. We adjust and polish and change every single part of the watch. You have to have certified watchmakers that know what they're doing. If you have an expensive car, you're just not going to bring it to any mechanic that doesn't know what they're doing. You spent $5,000. It's like if you put money in the safe deposit box. And one or two years from now, you will keep having your $5,000. We have to spend a lot of money to get all this equipment together, but makes me feel i doing what I'm supposed to do. It's not a question of money, it's my passion. Jewelers on time, simply the best.